What's the connection between the hottest town in Australia, a remote Alaskan island, Nelson Mandela's jail, and a humanitarian operation in East Africa? The answer is they're all powered by microgrids. Unlike a traditional power grid which links up large conurbations or whole countries, a microgrid is a small, self-contained network that serves a local area. That means it's able to provide access to electricity in remote, hard-to-reach communities that can't easily be connected to national grids. Like Kodiak Island. We're out here on our own in the Gulf of Alaska, so we take care of a lot of stuff ourselves. Or Marble Bar in the middle of the Western Australian outback, which previously relied on shipping in fuel for diesel generators at great cost. It's not like just going to your corner shop to get a loaf of bread because you forgot it uh, on the weekend. For us, it's a 450 kilometre round trip. But cutting down on diesel doesn't just save money, it also means a huge drop in carbon emissions. Microgrid technology is especially good at managing and storing natural resources near the point of consumption, meaning they can incorporate clean renewable energy from the sun, wind and waves. On Robben Island, the former apartheid prison and now World Heritage Site, diesel use has been cut by 75% while Kodiak Island now gets 99% of its power from renewable sources. The technology is there to actually fundamentally change the way energy works in our lives. And the ability to be self-sufficient means that microgrids can be vital even where a larger grid already exists. That's why the Red Cross installed a solar microgrid at their logistics centre in Nairobi to make sure they're covered even during national power outages. Cities at risk from extreme weather conditions can also benefit from having these islanded grids. Microgrids have emerged as one of the key technologies in the ongoing energy revolution, helping to make power cleaner and available to more people than ever before. <laughs>